Hi folks, it's Ron with Mostly Old Parts and on today's installation of our YouTube channel I'm going to introduce you to some more stuff you need if you have an early uh, B body, actually any B body, A body, C body, so on and so forth. Uh, remember these are driver quality cars that we're working with here at Mostly Old Parts and a lot of them uh, you will buy used and you will either install a set of headers or they will have a set of headers on it. Those can present some challenges when you come to maintenance items like spark plugs and spark plug wires. So today we're going to talk about the stuff you need to have to change a set of spark plugs in your driver quality Mopar. Alright guys and gals, if you've got a set of headers on your Mopar, uh, not necessarily a problem with the A bodies with a small block or the B bodies with a small block or even the E bodies. Uh, yeah, small blocks have great access to the spark plugs but if you've got a big block like a 361, 383, 400, 413 or 440 and I'm not including the 426 max wedge because you guys need an entirely different set of tools but the first thing you're going to need is a set of spark plugs and Uncle Tony's not going to like me because I use auto lights. Now he side cuts the electrodes on his spark plugs and has experienced cracking in the porcelain when he snips off the electrodes. There's a, a heck of a shock when he snaps it off with the side cutting pliers and it, uh, it cracks the porcelain. I don't side cut my spark plugs and these are the correct length to work with my spark plug wires against these headers without having inter any interference that would burn up the, the plug wires. Next thing you're going to need, you're going to need a spark plug socket and get one with a hex end on it. This particular one uses a three quarter inch wrench on the end and when you're in a jam and can't get a, a uh, ratchet like that or that up on the spark plug socket to change it, these really free up a lot of room there so you can get in and loosen or tighten the spark plugs. Next thing you need is a spark plug gap gauge. This particular one here is tapered as it goes around the, uh, the circumference of the gauge and I set all of my Mopar spark plugs to 35 thousandths. I know some other people like to tell you as much as 40 or 45 thousandths you're not going to gain anything with a standard ignition system in a Mopar by gapping it any more than that. In fact you'll probably lose performance. Stick with 35 thousandths. The next thing you're going to need is a couple of different ratchets. This one here, my old tried and true uh, that thing's been around for about 40 years and does real well. And then I've got a stubby ratchet. This guy here allows you to get into some really, really tight areas where you don't have room for the throw of the handle on a longer ratchet. You need various size extensions to get in there and do it. The little one inch extension has proved invaluable when changing plugs on my big block with headers. You'll also need one of these. What this is, you can use a piece of fuel line, 3 8 fuel line, but I have found that these silicone boots off of the old style auto light spark plug wires are absolutely amazing. I know the ones off the Excel wires work pretty well as well. Uh, you can use them, but these allow you to put the plug in and twist them in by hand as far as you can before you even have to use a wrench or a ratchet. One of the other items I use, of course, the, the three-quarter inch wrench I use on the spark plug socket, and I have a 13 16 combination wrench here. I typically use the box end where I cannot get a socket onto the spark plugs. So stick around, and I'll show you how to do this. All right, so before you even get started, make sure that the engine is dead cold. You do not want to work on an engine when it's warm especially when you're changing the spark plugs around these hooker competition headers. They really, really get hot and you don't want to burn yourself and it makes the job a whole lot easier if you just let it cool down. Okay, while you're waiting on your engine to cool down or maybe having yourself a cold beverage or maybe a cup of coffee, something along those lines, or maybe the wife called you in and told you it's time for lunch and she made you a sandwich. I don't know. It's a great idea while you're doing while you're waiting on all that to go ahead and gap your spark plugs we got our gap gauge here and we've got our spark plugs here well in shipping apparently these uh, 
washers, the crush washers, came loose on the spark plugs. Now these things have to go on a specific way. If you look closely at that washer, you see that one side of it is wider than the other. The wide side of the washer goes onto the spark plug. Okay, The narrow side goes against the cylinder head. So you just spin them on the threads before you gap them, just like so. Holding the camera in one hand, holding the spark plug in the washer in the other, this can be difficult. It's easier to do when you have two hands. Anyway, you want to get all the washers put on there appropriately. You see the wide side or the wide flange of the crush washer is against the spark plug and that's how it needs to go. Okay, the next step is to gap your spark plugs. You see the gap gauge I've got here? Let that thing focus on there. It has graduations around the edge of it that tell you the gap that you're going to have when you bring this up to the thickness at that graduation. I bring mine up to where the electrode is centered on 35 thousandths and then simply remove the gap gauge. Do that seven more times and all your spark plugs will be gapped properly. All right, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove your spark plug wires. Now you can do this one at a time. Take off one spark plug wire, remove one plug, put one plug back in and then replace the spark plug wire if you are worried about getting the spark plug wires out of order. Okay, now on some cars it makes a difference because of how the spark plugs are routed our spark plug wires are routed, excuse me, uh, as to how long the wires are and you may or may not have an issue with getting them mixed up. Mine are all cut to length and fall right in place. So I just simply unsnap the spark plug wires from under the headers off of the spark plugs and on this particular model or this particular car I am using a 45 degree boot. You see how that's got a little bit of an angle on it? If I use straight plug, plug boots all the way across the board, I have problems with clearance on the headers. And if I use 90 degree boots, I also have problems on a couple of the cylinders uh, where they will rub on the headers. I have found that these, uh, these 45 degree angle boots work really, really well uh, in clearancing around the headers and not having any problems burning them on the tubes. Okay, we're ready to remove the plugs as we've got all the wires taken off. And on Mopars, uh, the firing order, well, actually I should explain first that along this side, the driver's side of the engine, all of these are your odd-numbered cylinders. It starts at the front with number one, number three, number five, and number seven. Over on the other side, you have two, four, six, and eight. Now, Ford, in you know, with their better ideas, they decided that they were going to completely throw off everybody else as far as how their firing orders and cylinder uh, designations were concerned but we're not Ford guys here thankfully and we don't have an IQ of less than 30 so we're going to proceed I'm sorry some of my best friends drive Fords and I like to give them a little shot in the ribs from time to time so that was just some good-natured humor anyway we're gonna start with cylinder number one and on this particular one, it's just basic stuff. You take the spark plug uh, socket, you put it on the spark plug, you get out your short one inch extension, which has been an absolute lifesaver for me. Plug it into the socket. Now remember, I'm doing this with two hands instead of one. And uh, let me get my ratchet adjusted here so it will back this out. I put it in, break it loose. I'll take the ratchet off, okay, at this point, so that I don't drop anything out of the ratchet, some ratchet, uh, excuse me, out of the socket, some sockets have got a little foam rubber insert in them, I don't much care for those because uh, there's times when you cannot get the socket off the doggone spark plug after you put it in because that foam is so tight. Anyway, I put on the spark plug boot that I stripped off of an old Autolite spark plug wire. I pull this out and you can see it's got a, it's burning a little bit rich and we'll tend to that later. Uh, but for the most part it's got kind of a nice tan color to it. So we're not too far off on our mixture. But you see how nice that is? That's a great tool. You just put it on the spark plug and you twist it right out. Cylinder number three is the same way around these hooker headers. 
I've already got the spark plug socket and the extension on there. It's the, uh, once again, it's that one inch extension. Uh, most of your tool manufacturers make these things. I've got this particular one uh, off of a tool truck because they come to the shop every day where I work. Well, not every day, every week where I work. I got it loose. We'll come in here with our spark plug boot. Put that on there and see how easy these things just twist right out. Got him ready to go. On to cylinder number five. Okay, cylinder five is exactly the same as one through th uh, one and three. You just use the one inch extension, spark plug socket, ratchet, break it loose. Take your piece of spark plug boot and you twist that bad boy out. Okay, now cylinder number seven is a bit of a challenge because of how this header tube is routed. I can get the socket on there. I can put it right on the plug and you can barely even see the socket down in there, okay? It's a tight fit. There's not a whole lot of room between the end of the socket and the steering column here. Just got a couple of inches there. And with the short extension that I have, it puts the, the head of the ratchet right up against the tube. This is where a three-quarter inch wrench comes in really handy. I just put this wrench right on the hex portion of the socket and loosen it up a little bit. Got my spark plug wire in the way. Hang on just a second here. All right, we loosen that guy up. Take the spark plug out of the way. Once again, the trusty dusty silicone spark plug boot. Put it on and it gives a really nice grip. You see, I got no problems getting a hold of that and pulling the spark plug out. Okay, putting the spark plugs back in is exactly the opposite of how we took them out. I'm going to load the spark plug into the silicon boot once again and we're going to thread these things right back into the cylinder head. I'm going to go ahead and thread all four plugs in before I tighten any of them. This is a whole lot easier with two hands but I'm doing it with one. Got the camera in the other. All right, so we'll go ahead and get all these guys threaded in and run them in just as tight as you can with this silicon boot or with a spark plug boot. Look how flexible this thing is. I mean, it, it works out great. It's like a, a, a flex socket or a flex extension when you put these in. This one's a little bit of a chore to get to with only one hand, but we'll get it. You can see the spark plug starting in the cylinder head. Threads it right in. And that one is in. Last one with the silicone boot. And again, if you don't have a spark plug boot at your convenience you can use a piece of flexible 3 8 fuel line hose don't use something that's crispy that's been used with gasoline get a fresh piece or uh, like a piece of 3 8 vacuum line or you know the uh, um, oh the emissions line that's real flexible that doesn't have the woven part in it but you really need something flexible to get around the corners Anyway, all of the spark plugs are in, and I'm going to tighten them up the same way I took them out with the same tools, and then we'll switch over to the other side. Okay, all of the spark plugs are tight, and I want to, I want to remind everybody, you're not tightening a lug nut here. You're tightening a spark plug with a crush washer on it, okay? You just take it down until it hits, and then take it about another quarter of a turn. It doesn't take much to smash that down. So we're going to snap our spark plug wires back on. You want to make sure when you put it on that you feel an audible click. Okay? There are, it's, it, it's very plain, very simple. When that 
little snap on the end of the spark plug wire clips down over the tip of the spark plug, you'll feel it. If you don't feel that, if you don't feel that click as it goes down on there, either you have a bad spark plug wire or you do not have it snapped on fully. Pull the spark plug out, look at, or the spark plug wire out, look at it, and make sure that nothing is hokey with the end of that uh, spark plug wire so that it will clip right on the end. If it doesn't snap on, if you don't feel it really click on there, the boot is going to fall off and you're, not, you're going to have a misfire. Or worse yet, the boot's going to fall off and the spark plug wire is going to nestle itself up against the header and burn it to death and then you'll end up buying a new spark plug wire or possibly even a full set. So get them snapped on nice and securely and sometimes they can be a pain because you don't have enough room to get your full hand down in there. There went that one. So all the spark plug wires are now fully seated and ready to go. And we're going to proceed to the other side. On B and E body Mopars, this is the difficult side to access. You have a whole lot less clearance than you do on the other side. Well, why is that? That's because the engine is offset away from the steering column on the driver's side. It offers you a little more clearance between the inner fender well. You see the difference I have here between the header tubes and the inner fender well on the passenger side. Look at the big gap we got over here to get our arm and our hands and our tools and stuff like that in on the driver's side. So this side presents a bit more of a challenge. I'm going to go ahead and pull off all the spark plug wires and then we'll start pulling plugs out. All right, continuing with spark plug number two. Well, this is actually the number two cylinder. We're going to put the spark plug socket, or attempt to put the spark plug socket, on the spark plug. As you can see, I cannot get it fully seated on the spark plug because it comes into interference with the inner fender well here. So this is where that trusty 13 16 box-in wrench comes in. See this guy? Same size as the spark plug. We come up under with the branch and just break it loose, okay? Once again, we grab our silicon spark plug boot and you can see how tight the clearance is in here. All I did was break that spark plug loose and you can see this boot is hitting here. Well, because it's so flexible, I can go ahead and twist it out. If you run a really stiff piece of fuel line trying to do one of these, sometimes the fuel line can be a booger bear and you just have to use your fingers to get it out. Well, there's number two. That's the tough one to get out on this side. There's the spark plug on the number four cylinder. We're going to do the same trick. We're going to take our 13 16 box end wrench. We're going to put it on here. Break it loose. Nice and easy like. And sometimes you have a little interference with the flange on the header. That one didn't pose too much difficulty. The thicker the flange, the tougher it is to do this. I'm going to change hands with the camera once again. Come down in here, get my spark plug boots, uh, my spark plug wires out of the way. Thread that guy on there. I apologize about the poor video quality. I am not ultra Kathy. This, and I don't have a super assistant like her, so this is what we do. We film with one hand while we work with the other. All right. And he came out. You see him there. That one's a little fat, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to have to work on jetting that carburetor just a little bit better. Possibly even put in a new power valve. That thing backfired on me really hard. And we're going to move on to cylinder number six you see down here. Okay, on cylinder number six, you can see I can actually get a spark plug socket on it, but I don't have room to get a one inch extension in there along with the ratchet. So, what we're going to do is break out this little guy, the little stubby. I mean, this, this is what, three and a half inches long? We're going to take this thing and plug it into the socket and get that spark plug out of there. 
All right, so we got it broke loose with the stubby ratchet. I've got the spark plug boot on the spark plug, and I'm twisting it out, and it should be here in just a second. But once again, I cannot stress, I cannot stress how important it is to have one of these at your disposal when you're working on a big block Mopar with headers. Next is cylinder number eight. You can see the spark plug way down in there and this one we can get a spark plug socket on it and we're going to be able to use a three inch extension Again, we're using one hand here, trying to get this whole thing put together. So on cylinder number eight, I used the one inch extension once again. And we'll back it out. Got it loose a couple of turns with the ratchet. Put the spark plug boot on, twist it out, and away we go. Boy, that one's looking nasty. We'll get it all taken care of and put back together with a new set of plugs here. Have this thing running tip top in no time. Okay, I want to take a minute and correct myself. Earlier in the video, I identified these as 45 degree boots. These are not 45 degree boots. These are 135 degree boots. If you take 180 degrees, which would be straight out, and subtract 45 from it, you come up with 135. A 90 degree boot would come straight over like this. So when you're ordering their spark plug wires for a big block Mopar with headers, and you can't use all straight boots or all 90 degree boots and you really don't want to take the hassle and mix the two together and have to buy two sets to do it. Get yourself a set of 135 degree angled boot spark plug wires and it'll make life easy on you. Okay, all the plugs are in, all the plug wires are on. Now you want to take a moment and go back and make sure that you've got all your spark plug wires routed away from the header tubes so they don't cook. That one's close. See how that is? That's the only way that could go in. Without a 135 degree boot on it, it would not work. It might work with a 90 degree boot coming straight up, but then you'd have to route the spark plug wire over the top of the header here, which could cause it some damage. Make sure everything's free and clear on both sides. Come back. Make sure we don't have any interference between the wires and the header tubes. And it looks like we are good to go here. We'll reconnect the battery. I'll get it tightened up here in a minute and we'll be good to go. Well hey, that's another installment from Mostly Old Parts as to how to put a set of plugs in a big block B body Mopar. It's going to be very similar with the E body as they have about the same engine compartment. And I want to take a moment and apologize to those Ford guys that I may have offended. Again, those are I'm just friendly jokes amongst my buddies who also watch this YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow.